now call to order the February 15, 2016 meeting of the New County Independent School District Board of Trustees at 6.30 p.m. Let the minutes show that a quorum is present with all members in attendance with the exception of Mr. Johnson, who is absent. Please rise for the invocation to be given by Ms. Harrow and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance and honor the Texas flag to be led by Mr. Turner. Ms. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight with heavy hearts. We ask that you would bless the family uh, and the loved ones and friends and co-workers of Susan Walters, and we ask that you keep your arms around them and comfort them during this difficult time. We ask that you give us wisdom and discernment in all that we do, and in all things honor you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Please place the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Item two on the agenda is recognitions. Uh, Mr. Seid? Yes, sir. You got the floor. Thank you. Good evening. We've got four uh, very deserving candidates again this month. And uh, we'll get started with Kimberlyn Patzold from Porter High School. senior Porter High School on the powerlifting team. Coach Wax says that, talks about her and he says she finished first the Splendor powerlifting meet with a total lift of 720 pounds. She also received the Outstanding Lifter Award. Uh, the following week she finished first at the Oak Ridge powerlifting meet with a total of 740 pounds. She is ranked first in the region and first in the state uh, with a squat of 360, a bench of 220, and a deadlift of 360. She's a three-time regional qualifier and a two-time state qualifier. She's also a three-year varsity cheerleader for the Porter Spartans. Uh, she has an outstanding academic record. She's been accepted into Texas A&M University, and she also is a three-year member of the varsity track team, uh, where she was selected captain as well. Uh, she demonstrates all the positive attributes of being an outstanding student athlete and Porter Spartan. High School. Uh, Coach Shepard says Emily's a very hard worker. She's dedicated to the team. She has coached Emily for the past three years in track uh, as well as basketball. Emily lettered her freshman and sophomore year in track. Uh, she broke the school record in the 200 last year uh, with the time of 26-18. Uh, she set a goal this year to break her own record in the 200 as well. Uh, along with running the 200, she's on the sprint relay team, which she was also part of a new school record last year. To describe Emily, she is self-motivated, intelligent, compassionate uh, about whatever she is involved in and is a very hard worker. Uh, we started cross-country practice in August. Emily joined us even though she was not on the cross-country team so that she could start preparing for this year's track season. Uh, we've been lifting and running hard the first semester. Emily has excelled because of her hard work. Uh, she is in the top of her graduating class, takes college classes, and wants to become a physical therapist. She manages her time wisely and is a pleasure to coach. Looking forward to a great year at track. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, next, from New Kenny High School, James Duke. James is a junior on the tennis team at New Caney High School. Uh, Coach Stoltz said about him that it's been a pleasure to work with James for the last three years. As a freshman, he started playing tennis competitively on the team and held that spot, uh, the top spot on the freshman boys team for the entire year. Uh, throughout the past three years, he's been number one varsity on, on the boys team. Sorry, my eyes are getting bad and the principal is small. Uh, he is a leader and a role model for all athletes below him, demonstrating his hard work ethic every day on the court. Uh, even if he does not know it, all the boys team that are younger than him look up to him on the team and view him as a role model. Uh, James has played a very strong role in getting the tennis team to the area playoffs for the last two years. As a junior, uh, he is taking the leadership role in growing as an athlete to mentally and physically excel in the game of tennis. It has been many years since the tennis team has had a player dedicated and strong enough to sign and play in college, and I look forward to James's senior year to see what that spot will hold for him. soccer team at Porter High School. Coach Brown says that uh, he has coached Abner since his seventh grade. I've seen him grow from a young teenager into a young man. Abner is a three-year varsity starter for soccer. He's been a kicker on the football team as well. Faced several adverse situations in his life and he did so with a positive attitude. He realizes that hard work and discipline are keys to success no matter what your goals may be. He's friendly and outgoing with everyone. Abner works part-time at Red Lobster on weekends play soccer and it maintains a 3.0 GPA. In soccer, Abner is one of the captains on the team. He always makes the right decision even, even though or even when it is not the popular decision with his peers. Abner is someone we will be proud to call a Porter High School alumni. If all students were of, Albert, of, of Abner's caliber, uh, Porter High School would be a much better place. Coach Brown is proud and honored to have been part of Abner's life for the last six years. Congratulations. All right, if I get all of the student athletes and their coaches to meet me back here in the corner for a picture, please. Thank you. Item three on the agenda is open forum. I don't think we have anybody signed up for that. Item four on the agenda is closed meeting. The board will now meet and close meeting under the authority of Texas Government Code section 551.074 for the purpose of personnel matters, Government Code 551.071 for attorney consultation, and Government Code 551.072 for deliberation regarding the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property. Any action as a result of the closed discussion take place after the board reconvenes an open meeting. Time is 6.39. Uh, the underneath the canopy park. Uh, the 
and on the inside, the mason is starting, the air conditioning guys working, the plumbers going on, so uh, we're pretty happy with what's going on here. So, uh, bring you up. We got uh, tonight we're going to approve the contract to do the asbestos abatement out in Aiken, which we need to do before the general contract gets <coughs> started. Uh, and speaking of that, that's out to bid with bids coming in on that on the 24th of this month. And we were hoping that goes along pretty good. We had a pre bid meeting. We had six general contractors show up, another dozen demo guys. So we're feeling pretty good about that. Um, Porter High School, it's about 85% complete construction drawings. It will go out at the end of next month for bids. And the Aquatic Center is now about 70% construction drawings. It goes out about six weeks after that sometime in April or May. Early college, uh, along with the land thing, has been kind of at a standstill for a little bit, but maybe tonight when things go along with the land, we can move forward with that. It's, it's up to schematic design. I saw some pictures of it. It's about as far as we can go to really get the land and tweak a few things. Kings Manor, uh, it's about 50% construction drawings. It goes out sometime in June. And that's about what we got going on. Got any questions? Thank you, Mr. Hibbert. <coughs> um, did you still want the enrollment? That didn't get on there, but just quick, the number is still the exact same number as last month. What's kind of weird is some campuses went up by about 10 students and some went down by about 10 students. But uh, 13,942, exact same number as last time. Uh, we will be doing our tap payout on the paycheck that comes out this week. Uh, this year we're giving out $319,000. Uh, and as you can see by that chart I shared with you, uh, average payout is about the same as last year per campus. Uh, and the, the number of people receiving awards is about the same as last year. So. Pretty much in line with, with what we had last year. And just just in case I, I gave you all four years there, it looks like the, the amount of money that people earn went down. In a way that's true, but what happened is the first two years we actually had some extra money from the state also to put on top of whatever their awards were. So in effect it kind of doubled what we were giving out um, and that money was only available for the first two years, was not available last year or this year. So um, people didn't earn less per se, it's just we had one less pot of money to put towards that. So, any questions on that? Okay. Um, shared a couple documents with you today. The first one, um, Board 15 report. This shows the, the amount of hours that each campus had on their top 10 uh, things the students were visiting on their campus for the last week. And what we did is we put in the first column there the total number of hours that actually spent on that campus. And then the next column shows the amount of hours simply divided by the number of students. So. Um, that kind of gives you an average of how many hours per student each of those sites were hit during that uh, during the past week. One thing I do want to point out here, uh, there are three campuses not on here because we have switched them over to the new filter and so they're not part of this data. We're kind of testing out that new filter. Tavola, you will not find their data on here. Uh, Kiefer Crossing or uh, Infinity Early College High School, that's is why they're not on here. So not because they've done anything wrong, we just um, are experimenting with our new filter and they're on that system and not on the old one as of right now. A Couple other things I want to point out, the middle and high schools, you may notice there's a lot of sites on there that may not seem educational, uh, but this is data. Remember these kids take their machines home and so this looks at everything they do for the entire week. So this includes time at home and on the weekend. 
Um, and that is why, um, A, there's a lot more hours spent on the machines than there are uh, with the elementary students, but why some of those sites are not necessarily educational, it would appear when you just take a first look at them. Um, obviously, YouTube is something that we do use for education a lot, so we can't just look at that and say that's not for education or uh, just because of it being YouTube. But as you can see there, pretty happy with the data overall. Most of those sites, uh, the educational stuff is in the top two or three. And um, this, will be, this is something we shared also with the administration at every campus so they can see exactly where their students as a whole are going to and, and what their teachers are doing with their students. Second part of that, I also shared with you a document, and this was part of the big appendix. I don't know how many of you looked at that with um, Mr. Franklin's evaluation, but one of the things that goes along with this, we started using last year um, a company called Bright Bites, and um, they actually do a survey of our students, our teachers, and our parents. Uh, those of you that still have students here, you probably have seen those surveys. We did one last spring, we did one this fall, we'll do another one in the spring. So we'll get on a schedule, we're doing it every fall and spring. And we asked uh, students, parents, and teachers different information about um, how technology is being used in the classroom from all of their different perspectives and also um, all kinds of things with technology, even home usage and things like that. So. I just kind of wanted to make you aware of, of what we were doing with that report. This is one section of that report. It's, it's broken up into nine different areas. I wanted to kind of highlight this one. This one is, is one of the most important we feel. It covers what are called the four C's, which is something that's um, kind of known throughout the educational world, even uh, the college world and the business world. That's communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. Those are kind of four areas that we think it's vital for our students to have uh, training in to be better prepared to uh, go to college or go into the workforce. So this is uh, this area of the report covers that, and you can see some district-wide data. And then at the, the last page there gives you uh, where each campus fell in those different areas as far as kind of their campus scorecard. And um, wanted to highlight this section, A, because we feel that, um, and I say we, Dr. Neal, the curriculum team, everyone working together, we feel this is one of the, the, the most critical areas. But it's also, this report has highlighted to us that out of all the areas, this is right now our weakest area. And so this has shown us given us some direction of where we need to focus our efforts and where we need to work at. Um, you will see that just about every one of our campuses, uh, students and teachers rate themselves as beginning or uh, emerging, which is the two uh, starting areas of the chart here. So we definitely want to move up and move into the yellow, greens, and blue area, uh, as we are in a lot of other areas of this report. But um, you can see each campus there and, and how students, teachers, and parents answered those questions. Any questions for Mr. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Dr. Um, I'm going to refer to Jeremy here. He is our director for summer school. Give you an update on our summer school schedule and program. Our um, summer school is going to be held for our pre-K pre and kindergarten students and our migrant students and our fifth and eighth grade SSI students at New Caney Elementary. Our principal is going to be Catherine Alano, who is the assistant principal at Benz Branch Elementary. Uh, dates for pre-K and kinder and migrant students is going to be uh, June 6th through the 24th, so it's going to be three weeks. Uh, for 5th and 8th grade SSI is going to be June 13th through the 22nd, with testing on June 21st and 22nd. Uh, for high school, those are going to be held at each high school campus for EOC remediation and testing. Dates for remediation are going to be June 20th through July 1st, and testing will be the week of July 11th through the 14th. <coughs> Any questions? Thank you. 
Item 6 on the agenda is the consent calendar, consistent with consideration of minutes, consideration of financial reports, consideration of personal reports, and consideration of personnel reports. Any questions or discussion? Is there a motion to approve the items on the consent calendar? Second. Motion has been moved and second. There being no further discussion, a vote will be taken. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item 7 on the agenda is consideration of resolution authorizing the resale of Abbott Lower yeah. Tax. <laughs> Foreclosed properties located throughout NCISD. Then about Mr. Kelly. Yes, sir. Thank you all. Good evening. Uh, back in January, the appraisal district approached us about a new procedure that they would like to try to uh, collect some more delinquent taxes uh, from properties within the district. Currently, what they do is they have probably their monthly or quarterly resale, go sell those delinquent properties, try to collect taxes, get them back on the tax roll. Properties that don't sell are bid in trust, and usually those just hang around until an individual comes to them wanting the property. What this resolution does is allow them to put those properties back in the resale to get some exposure out there in the public so that hopefully we can collect what is past due on it and get them back on the tax roll so we can start recognizing those revenues. In other words, do what makes sense. Yes. <laughs> Still <laughs> hiding all the time. It's not literally. Yep. Any questions or further discussion? Is there a motion to approve the resolution authorizing the resale of the Avalor and tax foreclosed properties located throughout New County ISD? Second. There no further discussion. The motion be taken. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. <coughs> Item made on the agenda is consideration of approved contract for abatement to Inland Environmental for asbestos remediation at Beacon Elementary School. Mr. Higgs. Okay, we took bids on that. Got three good bids. I think you'll have the bid tab. Uh, company we got is highly recommended from our consultant, so it would be uh, no reason not to award to him. This gives us a little bit of opportunity to get a jump on the job so that we kind of took care of this while we were still finishing up the construction drawings. A lot less trouble though also we don't have a general contractor dealing with asbestos so what they're going to clear out of there is we have some hot tile and some underlying stuff that's under the sinks and a little bit of exterior waterproofing so it's not a big deal probably take them five six weeks to do it just about the time they finish is when we'll start demoing the rest of it. are there any questions or discussion is there a motion to approve the contract for abatement to Inland Environmental for Asbestos Remediation at Aiken Elementary? So moved. Second. Motion to be moved and second. There being no further discussion, will be taken. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion carried. Item 9 on the agenda is consideration of approved contract for design services to Coon and Associates for re roofing Crippen Elementary, Kings Manor Elementary, and New Caney High School. This way, we combine three of the, uh, these are re-roofing projects of those three schools. Kings Manor is a little different because we're letting that contract go at the same time in hopes we get the same roofer on the addition and on this, but by quantifying and making a bigger, big package, we get better contractors. And uh, roof, Bob, Bob Coon is very good. I've used it before, and I just think roofs are important, so it's better to use an expert on that instead of using an architect to do roofs. Uh, that's kind of why I recommend you go with a group consultant on this. Is there any, any questions or further discussion? Is there a motion to approve the contract for design services to Coon and Associates for re and Crippen Elementary, Kings Manor Elementary, and New County High School? Second. Motion and second. If there's no further discussion, vote be taken. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Got the rest of the agenda, <laughs> <laughs> Item 10 on the agenda is consideration approved to deduct change order from Gamma Construction for Tabola Elementary School. Again, same thing we've done on, on every project at the end of the CM Chris projects. There's a final change order, and this one came out really good with the credit of 400000 uh, We've got, like I said, job mission. There's one more to go. We'll get those numbers, which of course won't be anything like that. But, uh, 
I think we came out pretty good on Tavola. Uh, granted, he ended up with more than we started with <coughs> on this one. I think we like him kind of Are there any other questions? Is there a motion to approve the deduct change order for gamma construction for Tavola Elementary School? Second. Motion has been moved and second. Any no further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Item 11 on the agenda is consideration to approve the purchase of 5.4 acres as an alternative to early college, high school, or other school site and authorize superintendent to negotiate, execute final sale, and purchase. Mr. Grant. Yeah, I'd like to discuss the closed session of piece of property we'd like to purchase. It gives Mr. Franklin the ability to uh, sign the contracts and, and be able to negotiate the price so we don't have to come back to another board meeting and we get the, the uh, contract signed and closing and taken care of. Are there any questions? There's a motion to approve the purchase of 5.4 acres as an alternative to Freddie College High School or other school site and authorize superintendent <coughs> to negotiate and execute final sale and purchase agreement. Motion has been moved and second. And no further discussion. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed? Motion is approved. There being no further business, the meeting is adjourned at 8.32. Hope y'all enjoyed y'all's dinner tonight. Thank you for coming.